wreathed in flames in black miasma. The hulking creature made of stitched devil skins is produced by the portal. The runes on its twisted body suggest horrid rituals as they begin to move and shape themselves into new mysterious patterns. The stitches running along the detail lines of its face begin to peel back as it slowly turns towards the party. Roll for initiative. Welcome to a brand new episode of Monster of the Week. My name is Josiah, aka Dungeon Dad, and I'm here to bring you a new demonic denizen for your Halloween game. Or just for your regular 5th edition game, but it is October, so hence the theme of spooky monsters. Today's creature comes from 4th edition's Monster Manual 2, and is in fact an undead and a demon, so check both those boxes on my list. I'm of course talking about the Rot Fiend or the Abyssal Rot Fiend, as it were. This creature is essentially a demon spirit trapped within a shell of stitched together devil and demon hides. Pretty good concept already, I know, but trust me, it gets better. These creatures are considered demons of madness, as the book puts it, and there's a lot more to them than at first glance. So today we're gonna talk about just exactly what they can do in combat, some changes I've made to kick them up a notch, and of course some ways that you might be able to use this creature in your game. Now before we get into combat here, I just want to say this thing is a monster. I mean, literally it is a monster from the monster manual, haha, but it is a terrifying foe. It's large in size, and despite its hulking appearance, it doesn't actually have any physical attacks. Its primary means of attack is actually a move called Skull Splitter, which again sounds more like a move where it bashes someone over the head more so than breaks their mind with its demonic energy. But it is fortunately the latter, and that's exactly what it does. It has the reach of a regular melee attack, which is 10 feet for a large creature. However, there's no actual attack roll. It just does psychic damage, and the creature has to make a wisdom save in order to avoid some of that damage. Which is kind of nice and refreshing to have a monster that's a hulking beast that doesn't just do physical attacks for once. Plus, taking psychic damage and having your mind broken is a lot more horrifying than just getting whacked with a club. Its second attack, which is actually quite gruesome, is called Conjure Abscesses. As its name would suggest, the targeted creature bursts out into clusters of abscesses and tumors. This can target a creature up to 50 feet away now, and is also doing psychic damage. However, the key part to this ability is that if a creature fails its save, those abscesses cause it damage every time it moves more than 5 feet on its turn. Meaning that if this demon attacks you, and you fail your save so you take the full amount of psychic damage, also on your turn, if you move more than 5 feet, you take an additional 2d10 psychic damage. Now of course you can end this effect with a save or a spell, but anything that limits mobility and therefore your combat options is never great. And it's especially bad when you take into consideration the final ability of the Rot Fiend. And that next ability is called Floating Despair. What this ability does is creates a 20 foot radius zone of dark miasma. And inside that miasma is considered to be magical darkness. Obviously that's not great, but for the Rot Fiend it doesn't matter because the Rot Fiend actually has true sight. In addition to that, it also just grants combat advantage to the Rot Fiend if it's targeting a creature within that zone. And if that wasn't bad enough, any creature that starts its turn within that zone is going to be subject to more psychic damage. Meaning that if it targets a creature with its abscesses ability, which means that they're going to take psychic damage if they move more than 5 feet, and then it puts this zone of dark miasma over them, they basically have to move, otherwise they're going to take damage on their next turn, but if they move and they're targeted by the abscesses, they're going to take damage from that. So it kind of puts them in a no-win situation, which is exactly what these kind of monsters seek to do. And this magical darkness zone is by no means temporary. Until the Rot Fiend's concentration is broken, it lasts for up to 10 minutes, and it can even move it around the map. So this is one of those situations of problems stacking on problems where things just get worse and worse and worse the further the party allows it to go. Oh, and one thing I also forgot to mention, no creature is able to teleport within 30 feet of one of these things. So if you happen to be in that situation where you're trapped in that miasma and you're taking damage from the abscesses and you try to teleport out, not only is your teleportation not going to work, but you also potentially just wasted a spell. It is truly nasty. And that is basically the version of this creature in the 4th edition book. I think it's cool, and I think it's quite capable of being a good support unit for small groups of enemies. However, I thought that it was so neat flavor-wise that it would be a shame to not give it any extra abilities. After all, it is considered by the book a demon of madness. 
So what better time to break out the Madness chart from the Dungeon Master's Guide? A lot of people don't know that this even exists, but in the Dungeon Master's Guide, there is a chart for Madness. It's an optional set of rules and you don't have to use it, but I see why they didn't make it a core part of the game because Madness rules don't necessarily suit every campaign. But back to the monster, I've added an ability here called Maddening Revelation. Basically, it targets a creature within 10 feet and the Rot Fiend literally peels back some of its stitched together skin, revealing its inner demon. If its target fails the Charisma save, it's subject to one of the effects from the temporary madness table, literally causing that creature to go crazy. And this table has some pretty cool effects, all of which I feel are in line for the CR of this creature. You've got things like causing the affected creature to retreat into their own mind and become paralyzed, or things like the character becoming incapacitated and spends the duration of their madness screaming, babbling, or weeping. All kinds of crazy stuff that not only debilitates the character and therefore the party, but also adds a lot of flavor to this encounter potentially. And the madness caused by this is only temporary, it lasts up to 10 minutes. However, that 10 minutes is almost always going to cover the duration of a fight. So unless you've got someone in the party to cast Lesser Restoration who might be able to remove that madness, you're going to have a party member dealing with some kind of madness for the duration of the fight. The other thing I added in here was an ability I called Destructive Possession. The way this works is when the Rot Fiend is destroyed or brought down to zero hit points, the spirit entrapped within the stitched together devil skins is released. If there's a creature within 10 feet of where it fell, it tries to possess them. And this works exactly the same way that the CR4 ghosts from the monster manual try to possess creatures. The creature makes a charisma save, and if they fail, they're possessed. They're still aware of what's going on, but their body is now under control of that ghost. Or in this case, the Rot Fiend Spirit. And this effect persists until the possessed creature is either reduced to zero hit points, or a cleric uses a Turing-like ability or casts something like Remove Curse. By the time your characters are up against something like this, they're going to be a high enough level where they should have options to deal with possession. And it's situational enough where it might not happen every time. But the one thing that is for sure is possession is always very flavorful and can be really interesting. Which brings us to our third and final part of the video today. We're going to talk about how to actually use this creature in your game. I mean, first off, just having more good demons to use is never a bad thing. I do like the demons in the monster manual, but a lot of them don't feel original enough. Or maybe it's just because I've been playing the game for so long that I'm kind of used to what is the standard issue demons. But having something to kind of add into the mix and maybe a demonic dungeon or whatever the case is can really help diversify that and make a more memorable encounter than just going up against more of the same. Also, these guys are technically considered undead, so they could make good minions for an undead magic user or a lich, whatever the case is. And the other side of that, them being demons, also makes them great minions for a powerful demon overlord. Part of the flavor text in the 4th edition book actually says that Orcus has these guys kind of patrolling his keep. And for him, these guys would be a totally perfect fit, so that makes perfect sense to me. Another option you've got here too is if it uses its maddening revelation ability, the one that we added in, on one of the characters, Perhaps what it reveals in this maddening revelation is something plot related. It's possible that when it peels back its face and shows them its innermost horrors, it's just something that you come up with that seems kind of scary that might cause the player to go insane. But if you want to, you could have this creature show them something that is relevant to the plot. Maybe a possible outcome of their current quest if they fail. Or something else that might not even be true, but it could be something that will get them thinking and maybe push them down a certain path. The other option you have here too is just because of the nature of this demon, it is definitely created by someone or something. So it's possible that the party gets a lead on someone doing necromantic experiments or demonic experiments or both, and then when they go to investigate, they discover this creature waiting for them. Anyways, no matter how you decide to actually use this creature in your game, it's a really awesome monster, and I think it deserves consideration in any game really that involves undead or demons. And if you're looking for something similar to this for your Halloween sessions, I hope that this has fit the bill. If you do like what I do here though, and do you want to hear me talk about more monsters in the future, please subscribe to the channel. I've got at least one new video every week. And coming up this Wednesday, we're actually going to have a video coming out about playing villains in your campaign. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, I definitely encourage you to check that out. And of course, we have all the social media stuff in the description below. So if you like Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, any of that, please check that out. We have a Discord server as well. And I do have a Patreon set up. So if you're able to support the channel in that way and you'd like to, please check that out too. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you guys next week.